This is a fun one. So, <laughs> all right. I had to cut myself off there. I was having a little bit of fun, but this is why you don't try to be musically creative and make tutorials at the same time. It's, uh, it's two different modes of, of thinking. So I've scrapped it all. I've started from scratch. I haven't wired anything, just so you can see. Uh, we're going to keep this very simple because this is a complex module. Um, and so I'm not going to like make the most revolutionary sounds. I just want to help you wrap your head around what it's doing. So, first thing is, we have a initial West Coast DWG. I'm going to come out of the carrier to the end of the low-pass gate. And then I'm going to send a gate to the pluck. And we're running just an external clock at 16 notes right now. Okay. Now, the gate is also going to be sent to the XYS. Uh, this is basically a sequencer. Now, it's not just your normal linear 16-step sequencer. This is a far more fancy and interesting one. Most comparable probably to Make Noise Rene. Um, and you can use it for a whole lot of things, as you just saw. But use it for modulation, use it for note values, whatever you want. Uh, use it for weird percussion blips and bloops. It can do it all. All right, so we're routed into just the x-axis for now. As you can see, there's x and y-axis, 16 values, uh, 16 discrete parameters. Um, and then you have multiple outputs here. So what I'm going to do is come out of the out logic, and I'll explain it in a minute. But you can just straight up come out of the out or use this extra logic feature, which will allow you to, to even create more manipulation. So we're going to come out of the logic into the pitch of the carrier, and let's hit start. And now we're not going to hear anything because we haven't turned any values, okay? So let's just turn some knobs and hear what happens to the pitch. And nothing, because we still haven't enabled key tracking. Okay, so you can see right away the x-axis, or that logic out, is adjusting the pitch. I don't want to use all 16 right now. So what we're going to do is throw on the reset, drag that in there, and pull this down to 4. Just to make it a little more clear for this example. There we go. Okay, that should work. Now, as you can see, values in each direction So randomly you can get some kind of non-musical thing happening. One nice thing about this logic, and again, if you don't know any of this, please come to the info, but you can actually quantize the values. Um, so for note pitch signals, this is great to kind of lock it into a specific semitone. Okay. Now, we are just using the x-axis, so all we're worrying about is this. And in fact, we have our logic set to x. If I turn it to Y, we're triggering the Y and not really getting any difference because we haven't even sent the gate to Y. So let's do that. Now let's hit it. What's happening? Nothing. We need to switch it now. You have different modes up here. 
on how the sequencer is going to advance. So now I got it up and down. This is a zigzag in the Y direction. So you can see now just bouncing between them, we can even switch. I can say, go back, <laughs> we'll go back to Y. You see how the difference is until I switch on Y? That's why the logic is kind of nice. Otherwise, you can send different values to different oscillators from just the X or the Y axis. You don't have to like decide just to use logic because that can even complicate things further. But it's also kind of fun. Logic can do or, and, all sorts of fun stuff. So experiment with that. I'm not going to get into that right now. Let's just go back to the XY. Oh, you'll also see this one, which will advance both. So if we do... And we'll kind of hit both of these either way. So right away you can see you can create more interesting results. It doesn't have to necessarily be melodic. Um, lots of times when you're using a modulator, you just want to create bizarre sequences anyway. So let's go back to just the X. And of course you can do things like different directions. So let's kick this back up to 16. You can have it set to random. Have this thing bounce all over the place. Whatever you like. So the other things you want to know is that the this is the value, and then these are basically able to toggle the gate on and off depending on which. So if you want to kind of create different variations where things aren't hitting randomly, you can also have that happening. Give you some kind of rests and unanticipated accents and arrests and all sorts of things. So experiment with it, but just know that I would guess most of the time you'd want to be using the out logic to control anything. Pitch, filter cutoff, FM, opening up and closing gates, VCAs, whatever. You know, try all sorts of things. Um, and if you want, definitely look at some of the examples. The XY ensemble that's included is absolutely phenomenal. Let's mute my junk here. What do we got? Honestly, one of the best things you can ever do is just deconstruct the presets anyway. So, uh, because I'm not going to spend any more time doing this because it's almost game time. Let's go Packers. Uh, just check this out and really dive into and see what uh, is so special about this. Um, and see if you can determine. Now that you kind of understand what's happening, see how much more fun it can be. Throw a clock divider in front of it and lose your mind. Have fun with it. So, enjoy. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, but you're going to have to spend time really getting into it. Peace.